A teenager experiments with witchcraft. Echo, Echo, Azerac. What are you afraid of? And attracts danger into her home. It's here. It did not look human. The evil is coming. <laughs> this thing picked my mom up and slammed her up and down on those stairs. Can they stop it before it's too late? They were all in danger. It was after my family. I was terrified. In America, there is real evil. It lurks in the darkest shadows and in our most ordinary towns. Between the worlds we see and the things we fear, there are doors. When they are opened, nightmares become reality. Nestled along the Cook Inlet, just outside of Anchorage, Alaska, lies an area with a long history of trading and mining. It's the kind of place where people come to get away from the hustle of the lower 48. Cindy and Harold Murphy moved here 11 years ago from Las Vegas. Coming up to Alaska was a dream that both my husband and I had always, you know, various times in our lives that thought it'd be kind of neat to be up here. It was everything that we, we were looking for. It wasn't as big, it wasn't as populated. Everybody seemed so friendly. We looked all around Anchorage and like, no, Anchorage is just another city. I, I don't want city life. I want to get out, get a little rural environment, a little more laid back atmosphere. Up here you can say hi and then you wind up with a two hour conversation, which appealed to me when we came up here. The couple lives with their daughter, Annie, and Cindy's mother, Judy. Hey, sweetie. Oh, hey. How was your day? Oh, it was great. I'm a currently stay-at-home mom and caregiver, taking care of my teenage daughter and my mom. Yeah, we took mom to the doctor. She got a new prescription, and <laughs> it was good. How was your day at work? Did you get the restaurant all set up? Almost. We should finish up tomorrow. Harold oh, had his own business. He was a commercial cooking equipment technician. When I first moved up here, I mean, I would put in probably 80 hours a week, but with my cell phone, I was on call 24-7, 365 days a year. Harold, Cindy, and Annie live in the main house while Judy lives next door. This is ideal because she could have her home, I could have mine, we're still close enough. My mom really does love her independence. Judy fell in love with it because there was two separate living quarters on it. I wish she could be with us, but have her own privacy. We all stayed together. That was the one thing that my husband insisted on. He did not want to come between what my mom and I have had. We we're very, very close. But for Cindy's teenage daughter, Annie, Alaska brings not only new surroundings, but also a new interest in witchcraft. for you. Did one of you guys come into my room last night? No, uh-uh. No? I just sworn I heard something. She would hear things, and she would just feel overall uncomfortable. Well, what'd you hear? It's, never mind. My daughter was a typical teenager and wouldn't elaborate, so I didn't worry too much about it and pretty much dismissed it. Do you have a big day at school today? Yeah, I have a test, actually. Mm, okay. 
Well, okay, I'm gonna take the food over to Grandma's. You better get going if you're gonna make the bus, okay? I'll pick you up around four. Fine. Bye. One night, as her grandmother sleeps nearby, Annie and her new friend stay up late. My daughter is a night owl. She doesn't sleep at night, neither do her friends. So they were out in the yard, watching the stars and talking, and you know, teenage girls are. Did I tell you that my family is going to California for Christmas? No way. Yes. Oh my god, I'm so jealous. And you should be. <laughs> Now, are you ready to try this again? I don't know. What are you afraid of? Echo, echo, Azarak. Echo, echo, Zomalak. 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 That. Nothing, I'm sure. It was just an animal. I don't want to do this anymore. What? No, I'm sorry. <sighs> Fine. Come on, let's just go inside. It's getting cold out here anyways. After experimenting with witchcraft, 16-year-old Annie Murphy starts to feel uneasy in her new home. Annie decides to keep the eerie experiences to herself. I was concerned about my daughter. When I asked her what was going on, almost immediately she would clam up about it. She didn't want to talk about it. Late one night, while her friend recites a new spell. Echo, echo, Azarak. Echo, echo, Zomalak. Echo, echo, Azarak. Echo, echo, Zomalak. Annie suddenly feels a presence watching them. Zomalak. Echo, echo, Azarak. Echo, echo, Zoma. I don't want to do this anymore. Come on, let's just go inside. It's getting cold out here anyways. They said they saw a face looking out the window of my mom's home. Well, it was Grandma. You probably woke her up. No, no, Mom. I know it wasn't Grandma. They were very uncomfortable. Her friend loved coming over and spending the night with Annie and stuff, but they didn't want to be left alone. They were really scared of it. Cindy reassures the teens that it was just their imagination. My daughter thought the house was haunted. They were out in the yard. It was the middle of the night. Of course, they were going to get the creeps. Let's go inside. It's getting cold out, okay? Come on. 
I just thought, you know, she was acting like your typical teenager. The next day, Cindy checks in on her mom. Hey, Mom. It's just me. Mom, I brought some lunch over. Mom? Mom, where are you? Have you seen my watch? I can't imagine where it went to. I left it right there last night. I don't know what it's done with it now. I've looked everywhere for it. Where in the world have I put that watch? Oh, there it is. Oh. My mom, she just, all of a sudden, you know, she was acting like something was off. She would ask the same question two or three times and not realize she just asked it. It was totally unlike her. Mom, you need to take it easy, okay? Okay, I'm just tired. Oh, I... well, listen, I forgot to ask you, but did you go up in the loft last night? No, I went to bed early. Hmm. Well, Annie and her friends thought they saw you up there. No. Okay, well, just be careful. It's not safe up there. Not safe? Well, I mean, the stairs aren't safe. Oh. Okay? Mom was sound asleep in her bed. She hadn't gotten up. She insisted she was sleeping downstairs. Medicine, right? I'll be right back. Despite her growing unease with witchcraft, Annie continues her secret interest late into the night. Sweetie, you're still up. It's time to go to bed. Okay, Mom, you know I don't appreciate you just barging into my room. I was concerned about what was going on with my daughter. I just could feel something was not right. Listen, sweetie, I love you, even though you are a teenager. Now go to bed. Mm, I love you. Okay? Night, night. What's wrong? We don't have anything to eat. Well, honey, I'm gonna make supper right now, okay? Do you mind helping? Fine. You'll get the plates and the silverware. Annie! What? My daughter would go into uncontrollable rages. I used to say she flip-flopped. She would actually take on a different physical appearance that was totally unlike her. And she would say things that were totally unlike her. Annie. <sighs> Anything else? Do you mind getting the sauce and opening it for me, please? For the past few weeks, 
16-year-old Annie Murphy has been acting irrationally. We saw this face in the window. I was grappling with trying to understand what was going on with my daughter. Echo, Echo, Azura. Her parents have no idea she's been experimenting with witchcraft. I just could feel like something's not right. to the point where no matter what you said to her, she would argue with you about it. And then she would storm out of the room. And after a half hour, she'd come back and says, I don't know what I said. I don't know why I acted that way. You could definitely feel the tension and the oppression in the atmosphere. It was really hard to be in a good mood and stay positive. Most times, it was impossible. Cindy also begins to notice a change in her mom. Brought some tea. Oh, that looks good. Thanks. Oh, yeah. Thanks so much, honey. You're welcome. My mom's self-confidence and physical and emotional state kind of started deteriorating. I was asking all of her doctors, especially the one who prescribed most of the meds for the high blood pressure and stuff, are you sure that this isn't, you know, a side effect? I'm so excited about adding a few new pieces in here. I am too, but let's don't spend too much money, no, please. No, we're not. But then what color do you think we should make the couches? Oh, honey, you make the choice. Oh, it's glass. My mom had collected shot glasses for years. This one just shattered right where it was, broke, for no reason. Mom, what is it? There's someone else in here. What? She says, you're not gonna believe this, but I just saw something shadowy, dark, and I know I'm not seeing things. Cindy doesn't know what to think. Now her daughter and her mother claim they've seen something unexplainable in the cottage. Cindy decides it's time to tell her husband. I went to him and we talked about my mom. He wanted to make it okay with me, because he knew I was upset and I was worried for my mom. How is she feeling? I think okay. Cindy was constantly concerned and distressed at watching your mother go downhill physically. It's a frightening thought to a daughter. I mean, because you start realizing, well, there's a mortality involved. Your mother's not going to be around all the time. But Harold senses that Cindy has more on her mind than her mother's health. What about Annie? Well, she thinks mom's cabin is haunted. <laughs> what if she's right? I think there are a lot of possibilities to cross off the list before we get to that one. <laughs> and then that's what she told me. She thought, we had a problem with paranormal over there. As far as paranormal goes, I really didn't put much credence into it. I didn't really put much faith to the fact that it really existed, and I wasn't really worried about it. I just put it off as, OK, as teenage girls, you know. He wasn't really a believer. He thought I was making something out of nothing. The activity increases to nearly daily disturbances. She would call me almost every night. Things would get knocking around, and she'd give me a call going, it's starting. And I would run over there, and this went on for months. Cindy's mom requires constant monitoring. Hey, Mom? Yes, honey? I'm just calling to make sure you're OK. I'm going to bed soon. I dug out the walkie-talkies and charged them up so that we would be in constant contact because I wanted to be able to check on her, and I wanted her to be able to get a hold of me if something was going on. We'll call if you need anything. I'm going to leave this on. 
Okay, sweetheart. Sleep well. I think it did give her a little peace of mind. I know it gave me a little peace of mind that she could reach me. For more a haunting, visit destinationamerica.com. On the outskirts of Anchorage, Alaska, a family's happiness has been disrupted by troubling events. Echo, Echo, Azarak. After 16-year-old Annie echo, Murphy echo, begins secretly experimenting with echo, witchcraft. Echo. Look, in the window. Oh my God. Both she and her grandmother believe they've seen a ghost. Mom, what is it? There's someone else in here. What? There were a lot of times when my mom didn't know what was happening. I was fighting the thought that, oh, my mom's just getting older. You've got to come with me. She had not been that clear-headed, and she was confused, and she was doubting herself. Concern for her mom, who lives next door. Hey, Mom? Cindy keeps in touch via walkie-talkie. Yes, honey? I'm just calling to make sure you're OK. I'm going to bed soon. Too. We'll call if you need anything. Okay, sweetheart. I was upset and I was worried for my mom. Good morning. Mom, it's me. Mom, are you ready for your doctor's appointment? It's like waking up to your worst nightmare. She looked like someone had just totally beat her down. When I tried to get her up, she couldn't get up. And it's like, okay, that's it. I'm calling 911. Uh, I need an ambulance, please. Uh, it's my mom, she's fallen. Mom, are you okay? Mom, can you tell me what happened? Yes, she's breathing, but she's not answering me. Mom, please hurry, please. Judy is rushed to the local hospital. Mom, I am so sorry. What in the world happened to you? Oh, oh my gosh, what is this? When I started seeing the injuries she had when she was in the hospital, I was panicking. You could see where somebody had gripped her arms so tight they almost broke the skin. Honey, look at this. Who did that? It wasn't scratched, there was no blood, but if you take your fingernail and just 
push on your wrist and hold it down, you're gonna leave an impression of the shape of a fingernail. <laughs> Mom, what in the world? Are you comfortable? Back. Your back hurts. hurts. Okay, well, let me fluff your pillow, okay? Oh. oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! What is this? She had a huge, wide scratch on her back. I was terrified. It looked like somebody had beaten my mom up. Nurse! The nurses and the doctors weren't really looking at the bruises and the scratches and the scrapes. She was in renal failure, so that's what they were concentrating on. At one point, her heart started beating too fast, so they had to stop her heart and start it again. I mean, she really went through the ringer there. Nurse! Could someone please come in? Is everything OK? No! Look at this! Oh. I'm going to grab a doctor, OK? OK. Oh, Mom. My oh. goodness, what in the world happened to you? During that time, I was an emotional wreck. Oh. I am so sorry. <laughs> While Judy remains in a state of shock, Cindy desperately tries to figure out who or what attacked her mother. But with no signs of a break-in, Cindy begins to wonder if her mother and daughter are right. Could their property be haunted? I was angry. I was trying to find out what happened. A lot of the things didn't seem to have any explanation. After a week in intensive care, Grandma Judy returns home. Judy's granddaughter, Annie, has been troubled by a dark entity ever since she started experimenting with witchcraft. Could she have unleashed the evil plaguing her family? Hey, honey. How's she doing? She's been um, sleeping for a few hours now. Well, why don't you go? I'll stay, OK, because your friends have been calling. I feel so bad, Mom. Oh, honey, it's not your fault. Grandma's gonna be okay, right? Yeah, Grandma's gonna be okay. I was on a mission after that point to make sure she was cared for and would never wind up in that position again. Mom? Mom, can you tell me what happened? Mom, I can't help you if you don't tell me what happened. Upstairs. It was like somebody snapped their fingers and woke her up. I heard something upstairs. It picked me up and was slamming me up and down. No. Oh. She couldn't see anything. No. Oh. Oh. And yet she could feel it grabbing her and picking her up and slamming her, and it just kept coming back. Outside of Anchorage, Alaska, Cindy Murphy's mother, Judy, has been viciously attacked by what she believes to be a dark entity with evil intentions. Mom! Oh my god, Mom! 
She told me that this thing picked her up and slammed her up and down two or three times. I think it's because she was in a weakened state that this thing thought it was okay to attack her. I was afraid for my family because it was getting progressively stronger and worse. Although Cindy's husband, Harold, is not convinced, he conducts research on the paranormal. He orders a digital recorder, often used by investigators to capture electronic voice phenomena or spirit voices. Well, in my mind, the only way I could solve the problem was first get an understanding of it. I spent probably three weeks online on the internet checking with all the paranormal groups around the country, all the equipment involved. Testing one, two, testing one, two. Testing one, two, testing one, two. My husband is a problem solver. He's very analytical. If you have a mystery, he wants to solve it. What you doing, honey? Just reading up. Well, don't you think we need to ask somebody in that knows what they're doing? I'm not inviting a stranger into our home until I know for sure that this is real. I have a lot of faith in my wife. And when she said she had serious concerns, okay, well, I'm gonna find out if there's something to worry about or not. Be careful, okay? Being a skeptic, I bought the EVP recorder pretty much to disprove there was anything to worry about. Though he remains skeptical, Harold sets up a camera and the EVP recorder in his mother-in-law's cottage. Is anyone here? What do you want? Sitting there, you don't feel nothing. To me, it was about as boring as sitting in a dark closet with nothing going on, you know, about that exciting. Suddenly, the walkie-talkie he's been using to communicate with Cindy loses power. Cindy? Cindy? I had the walkie-talkie charged for seven hours. It was totally charged, and it was good for 12-hour operating time. Instantly, it beeped low battery. Something's here. Give me a sign. when I realized there was a serious problem there. There was no doubt that it's haunted. Harold now believes his family is in danger. I told Cindy to go online and let's find a group that will actually deal with the situation and remove the entity. Harold and Cindy convinced Judy to move in with them. I was scared. I wanted her out of there. I wanted her over at my house. It was... Like walking on eggshells, you were always on guard. There was no, you know, relaxing. You wanted to, to make sure you didn't miss something or turn your back the wrong time. We knew we needed help. After months of tension and fear, Paranormal technology investigations come to investigate the haunting. When I arrived, you could tell that they were just very terrified. 
and their voices would crack sometimes when they talked, and they were just very concerned about the situation that they were in. Based on everything the family has told Rob, he believes he knows what kind of entity is roaming the house. The incidences that you've described to me lead me to believe that you do have a demonic presence in your house. Demonic? Being levitated and slammed down on the ground three different times and seeing the images of this dark figure in their home, it was definitely something demonic. I was worried, frightened. It's more like a realization that there's things beyond your control. Has anyone in your family ever been involved in any occult practices, um, the spirit board, tarot cards, anything like that? He was trying to figure out what's bringing all this on. And then he asked me point blank, is your daughter dealing with anything in witchcraft? Come to find out, she had played around with the Wicca with her girlfriends and decided, no, that's not for me, and quit. No. Now, whether that created the situation or just helped fuel what was already there, I'll never know. Rob believes there is no time to waste. He recommends the team perform a ritual in Judy's home next door to exercise the demon immediately. This demon, we believed it was making Annie become very aggressive and defiant. <laughs> this just elevated until it became pretty much out of control. I think that this thing was fueling her rages and feeding off of her. When we walked into the home, we could feel a overwhelming, not a sadness, but like a depression. OK, um, can you start with the sage? And I'd like as much light in this room. Open the curtains, light the candles. Something was lurking over your shoulders. Something was watching you, then it didn't want you there. I'm going to need you to remain in continuous prayer with me. Okay. We consecrate this room in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We command all evil spirits to leave this place at once. We really felt the presence of something very negative. When I turn my head and look, I see this black shadow figure. It's here. And it did not look human. We command all evil spirits who are here to leave this place at once. For more than a year, the Murphy family has been terrified by a violent demon haunting their property. Get out of my way. I want her. A paranormal investigator believes their 16-year-old daughter, Annie, attracted the demon when she dabbled in witchcraft. This opened the doorway up for something very evil to come through. Rob and his team have no time to waste. I'm going to need you to remain in continuous prayer with me. They declare war on the demon and prepare to exercise it from the home. This was something that needed to be addressed immediately. They were all in danger. It's here. Once you start an exorcism, you can't stop. You have to complete this exorcism. We consecrate this room in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We command all evil spirits who are here to leave this place at once. The dangers in a human spirit is more psychological than it is physical. They'll play more mind games with you. The dangers in a demonic, that's another ball game. That's a non-human 
entity. They don't have to have energy. Their energy is biblical. Oh, Father, Lord. This demon, he didn't want to leave. He didn't like what we were doing. He didn't like what I was saying. I was his worst enemy. We need to continue. You need to reclaim your home. The evil is still here. But you can start feeling the real heaviness at that point. I mean, you know something's there, but it's like the room's closing in on you. The air got thicker. I thought someone was going to call the fire department. <laughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. It was a figure of a person. It had legs, it had arms, but it didn't look like a human. We actually seen this entity shoot out the front door. The evil has left this room. You could just feel the difference in energy. You could feel everything changed. We believe that it's, it's gone, it's permanently gone. It was almost like walking out from a dark building into the sunshine. A weight had been lifted off of our shoulders. Everything around us seems to be a lot more airy. There's no oppressing feeling. Now it's just like a breath of spring air. It's now been a year since the terrible ordeal. So hungry. I know. <laughs> Each family member is healing in their own way. Are we ready to Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for everything you've done for us. Thank you for protecting our family and... Annie never fooled with witchcraft again. My daughter and I came through that, and we're getting better. And I'm very proud of her and what she's making of herself. At this point, my mom has definitely moved past it. She doesn't live in fear anymore. She's been in her own home for almost a year and hasn't had any problems. And, you know, she's loving her life. Lord, just thank you for the time we have together. And, and thank you for Cindy's great <laughs> cooking. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> it is wonderful to have our life back. <laughs> oh. Thank you, Mom. Oh, honey, you're welcome. <laughs> I know for a fact that there's a definite battle between good and evil, that there's a spiritual world that we cannot see all around us all the time. And there are things that are fighting for our very souls. Because of this experience, my perception in life will never be the same as it was. I'll tell anybody, don't dismiss the paranormal. What you don't know can hurt you. A Southern California dream house turns into a nightmare. After the family discovers a hidden room with a dark secret. It's like a secret room. Someone or something lurks in the shadows. It was like a sledgehammer. Boom, boom, boom. Stay here. Call the police. I was terrified. Will anger, vengeance, and fear break the family apart? Something is in this house, Errol. I don't know what to say. Or worse. I was fearful for my life. In America, there is real evil. It lurks in the darkest shadows and in our most ordinary towns. Between the worlds we see and the things we fear, 
there are doors. When they are opened, nightmares become reality. Thirty miles outside of Los Angeles lies a suburb nestled in the foothills of the San Gabriel Mountains. Founded in 1887, the town originally began as a railroad community, uniting Los Angeles to the citrus groves and ranches to the west. It's kind of like a small town where you have the mountains that you can see. We decided that we wanted to buy a home, and we thought that that would be the best opportunity to start our new life. Did I do it right? You ready? Today's the day, right? Yeah. Come here. In the fall of 2001, Newlyweds Sherry and Errol and Sherry's two daughters move into a three-bedroom house. When Sherry and I decided to move in together, she was ecstatic. We're going to do this? Let's go. It was beautiful. I loved the house. It was one of those homes that just had that sense of family. Mm. What a great place for them to ride. Here they go. I have two daughters. Natalie's my seven-year-old. Danielle's my five-year-old. I had a special house in mind that I wanted for the kids as I would want for my own children. It's got a very large yard, but most of all, it was safe. Sherry's mother, Sharon, lives a few hours away. Oh, boy, here we go. Sherry and Ariel got along quite well. The kids took to him, and seeing Sherry so happy and, and Errol and the girls, too, it made me happy. You can well, do this. You're going to do it. Are you set? Yeah. OK. And go! Oh, oh my gosh. Be careful. <laughs> it was everything she wanted and more. It was the perfect world. For the next few days, Sharon helps her daughter unpack and organize the house. It was late at night, and we decided to go out in the garage See, this is what I mean. If this wants such a mess, I think I could at least fit one car in over here. You know, if we move these boxes over here. So how is Errol liking his new job? You know, I think he likes it a lot. He's been gone a lot lately. What in the world? Did you know this was here? No. My mom and I found the secret room, and I found it quite odd that it was concealed. Go get Errol. Tell him to bring me a flashlight. Come see what my mom found. What's going on? Well, it's like a secret room. The first time I went into the room, my mind was going in a thousand different directions. What is this room doing here? Why is this room here? Who put this room here? I mean, I was just trying to brainstorm as to what it could possibly be. We noticed that there was a fluorescent light, and there was also this cabinet. What do you think that's for? I don't know. This is strange. It was very odd. It was not disclosed to us when we were buying the home. Like somebody was trying to keep a secret, but we didn't know if maybe this was just an honest mistake. Honey, think of it as a bonus room. It's creepy. Come on, this is gonna be great. It's extra rooms, extra closet space. <laughs> Listen, let's go get some dinner, come on. We just left it as, OK, so there's another room. We figured that it's just storage, and that was it. For the next few weeks, while Sherry is in between jobs, she spends most of her days in the house by herself. When we first moved in, I would be alone. The kids would be off at school. At the time, Errol was working quite a bit, so he was basically never really home. whenever I would do laundry in the garage area by the secret room. 
and I would feel that somebody was watching me. I knew that something wasn't right, but I brushed it off. I would start thinking that maybe it was just my imagination. I heard this thud noise as if one of the kids had rolled out of bed. They were both wrapped up, very secure. Nothing fell. I checked the room. Is everything you okay? You scared me. Okay, let's go to bed. Come on. Okay. I was upstairs on the computer. I was looking for a job at the time. And I hear this faint noise of footsteps going up the stairs. At first, I thought that it was Errol, and I thought that maybe he was coming home from work early and he was gonna surprise me. I even turned around and I got up and I went to look at the top of the stairs to see if he was there. Errol? Is that you? And I didn't see anything. Soon after moving into a suburban Los Angeles home with her new husband and two daughters, Sherry Muzowski discovers her house has secrets. What do you think that's for? After stumbling upon a hidden room in the garage, Sherry is left with a growing paranoia she can't explain. It's as if someone or something evil lurks in the house. I would be alone. The kids would be off at school. Errol would be at work. Errol? And I would feel that somebody was watching me. Errol, is that you? I 
I could hear these footsteps getting closer and closer. The feeling was so strong that I actually thought it was Errol standing beside me, touching my neck. I turned around, and he's not there. This really freaked me out. I knew that it wasn't my imagination. The physical contact leaves Sherry shaken, and she finally confesses her fears to her husband. I swear, hon, something was here in the house. I heard footsteps on the stairs. I'm sure there's a natural explanation. You said yourself, right on the fault line. When Sherry started first expressing her concerns to me about the noises in the house, I really did not think that there was anything unusual. You're not listening. Something touched me. Errol brushed off a lot of the noises and the feelings that I would get because the house was located on the San Andreas Fault. Hey, let's just get some rest. It's going to be OK. I just, I believe what I see. I knew that I was not alone. I knew that I wasn't crazy. And I knew that there was something happening inside of that house. A few days later, Sherry's mother, Sharon, spends the night. I visited, you know, often to help take care of the girls. The girls, they liked me to stay in their room when, when they went to sleep. And um, I'd either read or watch television. The door slowly opened, and I felt like somebody was watching me. Sherry? Errol? In that amount of time, they couldn't have made it back to that room and closed their doors without making a sound. I don't scare easily, but I was frightened. Also fearing for her grandchildren, Sharon is compelled to share her experience with Sherry. So you said you wanted to talk to me about something. The other night, when I stayed in the girls' room, yeah. the door opened on its own. But I felt that someone was there. Sherry and I started noticing and becoming aware of things that were happening. I've been having similar experiences. I knew that there was some type of paranormal activity. Somebody else was experiencing it as well. It wasn't just me. I think the house is haunted. Everything that I was saying finally started to make some sense. I've tried to talk to your home about it. He doesn't understand, or maybe he just thinks I'm crazy. I believe you. We realized that it started when we first found the secret room. Sherry decides to research the history of the home. I pulled up the title of the house to see the previous owners, and I wanted to see if anything happened at the house prior to us owning it. 
I even went to the police department. I gave them the address and I asked them if they had any type of calls that were at the house and they went back on their records and they said no. And they said that basically the house was, you know, pretty quiet. With no evidence that a traumatic event took place in the house, Sherry avoids discussing the haunting with Errol. But keeping her feelings bottled up begins to eat away at their relationship. When Errol basically ignored what I was trying to tell him about the house, it really bothered me. Not only did it make me feel insecure, but it also made me feel that he wasn't listening to me. Is dinner almost done? It'll be a while. I was just going to chill a bottle of wine. Okay, if you want to. I thought she was overreacting. We were both on, on edge a lot. Who is that? It was like a sledgehammer against the wall. It rocked the whole house. And the sound is coming from the garage. Call the police. Soon after newlyweds, Errol and Sherry and her two daughters move in. Sherry is convinced their house is haunted and that the source lies in a secret room off the garage. This is strange. But Errol doesn't believe in ghosts. With each passing day, Sherry finds herself growing more resentful of her husband. I heard footsteps on the stairs. I'm sure there's a natural explanation. I just thought we lived in an older house, and it could be explained by normal causes. I was very upset. He just didn't even believe me. He didn't even really listen to me. I knew that there was something happening inside of that house. Is dinner almost done? It'll be a while. It sounded like somebody was in the garage, taking their fist and banging against the wall. Boom, boom, boom. I was terrified. Call the police. Don't go out there. The banging was so loud that it would have broken the stucco. I don't know how that was achieved without damaging the wall. I, I just couldn't figure it out. Errol cannot locate the source of the mysterious banging. Police officers arrive to inspect the exterior of the house. Ma'am, sir, we walked around the house. We didn't see any signs of forced entry. We didn't see anything unusual, anything out of the ordinary. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Did you check on that one side that, you know? So we checked around nothing? the doors, around the windows. We checked everywhere. We didn't see anything unusual. No. I'm, I'm sorry. The officers made sure that they walked the whole outside of the house, the whole outside perimeter. They checked everything. They didn't find any footprints. I mean, don't hesitate to call us anymore if you hear something, OK? OK. All I'm right. sorry. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. You too.
What do you think that was? I don't know. Something is in this house, Errol. I don't know what to say. That's what I keep talking about. For the next few weeks, the couple remains on edge. While Sherry is convinced that opening the secret room has unlocked something evil, Errol struggles to make sense of the unexplained noises. After that happened, I was giving everything a second look. <laughs> I heard two girls whispering and then laughing. Sherry let the kids go to sleep by television, so I figured it's one of those shows that they're watching on TV. When I went in there, they were definitely asleep. These kids were out. I really was perplexed. I didn't know what to think. It sent chills right up my back. A few days later, Errol is working in the garage. I felt like someone was looking at me. For more haunting, visit destinationamerica.com. On the outside, this suburban Los Angeles house and family look like any other. Mom, stepdad, two girls, living a normal life. But the discovery of a dark, hidden room may have awakened an evil presence. Errol is reluctant to believe their dream house is haunted until his curiosity gets the better of him and he goes exploring. Pretty much fed up with everything that was going on and wanted to know what was up with that house. There was no mistaking that something had put their hand on my shoulder. I didn't know what to do. I really didn't know what to do. That's when I realized that there was something going on in the house that wasn't, wasn't normal. It was the first time in my life I had felt afraid. I felt this hand. I mean, sure, I felt this 
this man's hand on my shoulder. And a few weeks ago, I, I swear I heard little girls giggling. Now the family has detected three ghosts, a menacing male and two little girls. But the reason for the haunting remains a mystery. I knew that he finally was witnessing what I had witnessed. The noises and the feelings of being touched on my neck. All the things that I was trying to tell him, he now got to see that I wasn't making any of this stuff up. It made me feel a lot better that I wasn't alone. That's what I've been trying to tell you this whole time. What are we going to do? I, I don't know. I knew that whatever this thing was, this spirit or entity, I knew that it was going to get worse in time. We needed to do something. Errol, can you come here, please? Devout Catholics, Sherry and her mother conduct research on how to rid the house of ghosts. I had read up on a couple of websites where they had said, take holy water, say a prayer, also hold a crucifix, and bless the house. I was scared for all four of them, but I also felt helpless because I felt like there was nothing I could do. I'm going to take this. OK, I'll take this. Why don't you take that? Your mom sent it for us. Errol is of Turkish descent. They have this cultural item. It's called an evil eye. You put it in an area of your home where you would like to ward off evil. Are you sure this is going to work? It couldn't hurt. All right, so each doorway. Shari uses holy water her mother brought back from a shrine in Lourdes, France, considered by many to be one of the holiest places on Earth. In the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Bless this house. Why don't you hang that on the garage door? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Bless this house. I just thought, you know, if that made her feel better, that, that was OK with me. But I, I, I didn't put any credence in it at all. You're trying to move a mountain with your fingertip, it ain't going to happen. It's not going to happen. For the next few days, the home is peaceful. After I did my own blessing of the home, it seemed like the general energy in the house was very calm. And I felt very hopeful that it cleared whatever it was in the house. It got rid of it. Both Sherry and her husband, Errol, have had frightening encounters with a strong, evil male ghost in their home. <laughs> Errol has also heard the ghostly sound of little girls laughing. One night, while Errol is out of town, Sherry and her daughters, Natalie and Danielle, spend the night alone.
wrong, hon. I, I don't want to sleep in here. here. My younger daughter, she was hysterical. Oh, there's nothing to be afraid of. What's the matter? Yes, sir, it is. She's right, Mom. There are these two little girls. My oldest daughter said there were these kids that were talking and they were giggling, and she couldn't get them to stop. You know what? Come. We'll just sleep in my bed tonight. Yeah, But are the ghost children more sinister than they appear? I felt that I had no control. I really felt at that point that whatever this thing was, it was taking over my home. After a failed attempt to rid the house of the spirits herself, Sherry invites an expert to investigate the secret room. I come originally from Germany. I'm a psychic medium a healer and a soul empath because I can tune into souls. When I tuned into the energy of the house, the first thing I wanted to check whether the spirit came from outside or was it something which is actually attached to the location itself. She was my last resort. She was the only person that I felt could put an end to this the side of the house where the garage was. That seemed to me the focal point. The secret room felt sad. It felt full of sorrow. It didn't seem as dark as a demon, but it was pretty intense. Definitely a lot of aggressive energy, frustrated energy. Suddenly, Claudia has a vision of an event that took place in the secret room. I saw this man laying in a corner alone. He seemed to be involved in the drug business. It seemed this man had died a violent death, possibly a drug overdose. There is someone here in the house with you. It's a man. And Claudia warns he's, he's dangerous. This dark spirit, his life was cut short. He envied anybody who had a family, children, a wife. His family left him, and he became cruel because he was using drugs or dealing with drugs. Shari is stunned. When she searched the history of the house, she never came across a record of a man overdosing. Because his life got cut short, he wanted to make us miserable. He didn't want us to have a happy family and live a happy life. But what about the little girl ghosts? Claudia explains that they are really the ghost man in a different form. By using children, this male spirit was a great manipulator. This spirit was tricky enough to use children's voices to get their attention. And then once the children's voices were heard, then he could gain more power. I was terrified. I knew that it was going to get worse. Claudia gathers the necessary ingredients to cleanse the house. Instead of using holy water, Claudia uses highly flammable alcohol. If it ignites, they will know they are not alone. Okay. This is going to let you know when the spirit is present. That's when you need to be the most focused. You have to reclaim your home. Can you do that? I think so. OK. St. Michael the archangel. She started praying, and she prayed her heart out. Defend us in battle. Stand beside us, behind us, in front of us, above us, below us, and protect us 
from the evil snares of the devil. St. Michael, take this evil entity back to wherever it is he belongs. This cleansing was really, really intense. The heat was tremendous. You have no business here. She became the flame. She became the light. This is not your home. Leave this family in peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. The presence is gone. The energy in the house was very calm, and it didn't seem as heavy. For weeks, the family experiences no paranormal disturbances. <laughs> Yeah. Well, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I was very hopeful that I was going to get my house back. Don't give me any idea. <laughs> yeah, that would be terrible. You created a monster already. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? Girls, stay here. The door was just going back and forth, shaking. We knew there was there was no one on the other side. This was clearly a spirit. What is it? For the last nine months, a family of four has been haunted by a forceful and imposing entity. And protect us from the evil snares of the devil. A medium warns it's the ghost of an angry drug addict who lost his family to his addiction before dying of an overdose. This male figure, which was so hateful and envious towards what Errol and Sherry had as a couple, he was this very dark and negative spirit. After the house is cleansed, the family believes the ghost is gone. <laughs> I'm gonna laugh now. It seemed like the general energy in the house was very calm. You're good. I was yeah. very hopeful be that the blessing was gonna work. <laughs> Girls, stay here. The door was just going back and forth, shaking. This was clearly the male spirit, and he wasn't going to leave. What is it? <laughs> Honey, we need to get the girls out of here. Let's go. Come on. Come on. They realize the ghost is back. And that's when I made the decision, I can't stay here. I can't live with this anymore. I was done. While Errol rushes the girls out of the house, Sherry packs a few essentials. There was nothing that was going to make me stay in the home. There was nothing that was going to convince me that things would get better. All of a sudden, I felt pressure of two hands forcefully push me, push me so far that I fell. That was the most terrifying thing I have ever gone through in my life. That's when I knew that this entity, this male spirit, was dangerous. I knew that this man now wanted to hurt me. It's the worst feeling to know that you've got no defense. That was the day that I actually moved out of the house and I moved the girls out of the house. I didn't go back.
The family moves in with Sherry's mother while they consider their options. Errol went ahead and he put the house up for sale. Eventually, they are able to sell what was once their dream house. As for the newlyweds, Sherry and Errol, the stress of going through the haunting takes a toll on their relationship. After less than a year of marriage, they make the decision to split up. This entity absolutely led to my divorce, absolutely. This ruined our chances of having a happy life together. You're not listening. I'm a guy that normally figures things out, takes control, fixes the situation. You know, I, I, I don't focus um, on the problem. I focus on the solution. At some point, I knew there was no solution. Shari and her daughters eventually start over in a nearby town. It was very hard to see my daughters afraid to the point of where I knew that they didn't want to be in the house. That was one of the hardest things that I had to do, and it really bothered me. I'm happy at the fact that at least we were able to get out of the home and we were able to live a happier life going our separate ways. But I'll never forget what we went through. I think this whole situation did, did leave a bad taste in my mouth because I lost my family, I lost our dream house. Watching her daughter's life torn apart has left Shari's mother heartbroken. I think that feeling of just feeling helpless and you can't help someone that you love that much and you'd do anything for them, that's the worst feeling. Actually, worse than anything else you can imagine. It was all taken away because of this male spirit. He won. My marriage lost, he won. Thank <laughs> you.